Thank you for attending this talk about the Kubernetes Command Configuration Scoring System, or KCCSS, in short. I'll start with a brief introduction. Uh, so my name is Julian Sobreyer. I am now part of VMware since uh, a week ago. I was in a company called Octarion that just got acquired by VMware. If you want to talk to me or send me a question, uh, don't hesitate to email me directly at jsobreyer at vmware.com. I'll show you a couple of other ways to uh, contact me later on. So a quick word about Kubernetes before we talk about security for, for Kubernetes. So the short definition of Kubernetes is that it's a container um, orchestrator that basically sits between your servers and your containerized application. But definition doesn't do justice to the extent of what Kubernetes uh, does. So Kubernetes really is an abstraction, abstraction layer for a lot of things. It abstracts your entire um, infrastructure. You know, that's you define your storage provisioning uh, in Kubernetes. You define how you expose services to the other outside, so load balancers, so ingress controller, etc. It abstracts your entire um, network layer. You know, it, it, it gives access to the containers where you can log into to the containers directly. It defines what kind of privileges and access each container has. Uh, it redefines how users would also workload. Um, permissions that are defined, how to manage your secrets. So it's really a wide area that Kubernetes redefines through its abstraction layer. And today we'll talk specifically about the runtime configuration of workloads. There are over uh, 30 different types of configuration settings for your running container applications. Now, some have to do with isolations. Now, can con our container actually isolated from each other, or can they share the same PID, the same, same IPC to communicate with each other? Maybe they share some of the, some of the file or system. Uh, maybe they get some capabilities that allow them to do man in the middle, so they can actually see traffic coming from uh, other uh, containers or even network sniffing. Uh, it also, def no, some of the security Settings or infrastructure uh, security define how and what services are being exposed. You know, so a load balancer, uh, Kubernetes load balancer, uh, but also you know, using share host network, binding the uh, workload IP to the node IP, using kubectl command to basically poke a hole in your Kubernetes cluster and expose uh, a container port directly to the outside. You know, all of that then can be you know, managed through ingress or, or egress policy from communities that you may or may not have uh, set up. Integrity, you know, can, can, can the workload make changes to, um, uh, to the host itself through a file system, through privileges? Can workload even talk to Kubernetes? And maybe some workloads are able to create their own pod, their own workload, or delete, delete workload because they have the right uh, API uh, access rights. You know? Can they have access to, to secrets and you know? all the capabilities, uh, your, your, your policies like SecCom, PC Linux, that you know, might try to prevent container escape? Uh, and if you add other things such as the service mesh, you, know, you get a lot more settings that you know, dictate the security posture of all of your um, containers. And with over 30 uh, security settings, uh, that means you have over a billion uh, combinations. So how do you know, you know, out of these 30 settings, uh, which one, which combination are more uh, um, risky than others uh, and how, how many of them are uh, are okay because you know some of these settings uh, are uh, canceling each other uh, so for example this you no know, combination of having um, a load balancer that ex that uh, expose uh, services that also uh, has um, privilege access can create other other pods you no know, it is more uh, dangerous and it's Pretty easy to tell, but others, for example, you know, having yes, being, being the ability to do network man in the middle or network sniffing, uh, but having a service mesh that do encryption will actually remediate some of it. 
But if you ask many of the DevOps or developers, you know, which one of your uh, workloads that the more risky or why, you know, the answer will often be, you know, I don't know. I can tell which one, I can tell you which one are running uh, privilege. I can tell you which one are running as root. But really doing this uh, comprehensive security assessment uh, is very hard. So that's why, you know, at Octarine, we wanted to give a way for our users to be able to tell exactly which one of their workloads are more risky, where the risk come from, and help them remediate or mitigate um, these uh, security uh, issues. So we wanted to come up with the framework uh, that will do just that. And the first thing that we did is look around and see what were the existing security framework and whether we could apply them to these specific issues with Kubernetes runtime uh, configuration. Uh, so you're probably um, familiar with the CVSS uh, framework, the Common Vulnerability Scoring System. If you do image scanning for Kubernetes, no. The vulnerabilities uh, are rated with this framework. Uh, so it's a very good framework for describing the risk. You know, it shows what is the impact on availability, confidentiality, integrity, what's the scope uh, of the vulnerability, how easy it is to exploit it. So a very good uh, way to describe it. And you can already tell from the name of you know, KCCSS, CVSS, that uh, a lot of the inspiration came from this um, framework. And that's why we have a similar name. Under the same umbrella as the CVSS, there was actually an attempt to um, apply CVSS to configuration files. And there was a framework called the Common Confi Configuration Scoring System, CCSS, that was an adaptation of CVSS for configuration. Uh, unfortunately, this project is pretty old. Uh, it's based on the older version of CVSS, version 2.0 right now, since we had version 3.1. And it did not uh, take off, but it showed the potential for being able to apply the CVSS framework to configuration and not to vulnerabilities. And finally, the last um, framework that we looked at uh, that was very inspiring for us is the CCE, the Common Configuration Enumeration. And here's the difference is it's actually a checklist um, that uh, a DevOps person can go through to make sure uh, a software or an OS is uh, configured securely. So it's a list of checks that you go through one by one and make sure that all your configuration file settings are uh, secured properly. So we basically took the best of these uh, frameworks. Now we created a, a list of rules inside KCCSS for each of the security settings, so just like CC. Uh, we describe this rule, this risk, the same way as CVSS, and I'll, I'll go into more details very soon. And you know, obviously, they apply to configuration settings, not vulnerability, so just like CCSS. So we took a, you know, a combination of the existing framework and what we did is we made it specific to Kubernetes. And also, we um, created a way to aggregate this individual risk you know, for each role to uh, be able to compute a risk score for the entire workload. Because in the end, what we really want to show is what is the most risky workload. So I'll get into more details about you know, the framework and the different rules. So we have two types of rules. The first one is a risk. So every um, configuration setting that can introduce a risk is described the same way as the CVSS. So we show what is the impact to um, integrity, confidentiality, availability, uh, you know, from non, low, high, uh, with a good description that should really help anybody who is not a security expert to really understand what are the actual risks um, that they are uh, potentially uh, running or exposing themselves to in their Kubernetes cluster. Then just like CVSS, we show you know, how easy it is or not easy to exploit that vulnerability. So we have a rating for the exploitability. You know, is it something very complex or is it something that you know, anybody can do with tools that are available out there? Uh, the attack vector, you know, is it a, a remotely exploitable uh, risk or is it, does it require local access? And uh, what is the scope um, that we made specific to, uh, to Kubernetes? So can you, with this 
uh, potential risk? Can you impact just the, the, the workload that's running or can you impact potentially the node uh, that's, that's uh, where the workload is running or the entire cluster? So along with the risk, we have a different type of uh, rule that uh, we, we created that does not exist in CVSS, which is a remediation. And that's a security setting that um, improve or remediate uh, some of the existing risk uh, and, and lower some type of existing risk. And we describe it you know, in a similar way to CVSS. So does it lower the uh, risk on integrity, confidentiality, availability, and how does it do it? Does it remediate remote or local attacks? Uh, does it help remediate uh, um, issues within the, the pod itself or maybe the entire uh, cluster or the node? Uh, so very similar to the way we describe um, risk. So the first no, half of the, of the framework is this list of rules and uh, uh, which contain risk and remediation. Now, the second part is the formula uh, that will uh, create this risk score for the entire workload. So how does this work? First, uh, we uh, start creating a risk score for individual risk. So we map a workload with you know, 0 to 30 something, uh, some series that may apply to, to the workload. We create a, a risk score from 0, that's the uh, lowest risk, to 10, highest risk. And it's very similar to the CVSS formula. Uh, we basically take the impact of the risk on one side, and on the other side, how likely it is to exploit it, and uh, what is a potential blast radius of this um, of exploiting this vulnerability. And we add the two of them, and that gives us a score from zero to ten. So first step, we create a risk score for each individual risk. Uh, in a workload. And then from this um, list of individual risk, uh, we uh, came up with a new formula, and it's not something that exists uh, uh, in CVSS, which only rates individual vulnerabilities and not the security of your overall software. Um, so we look at similar, um, uh, similar, uh, at similar risk. So we look um, for every risk that have the same attack vector, um, and the same scope, uh, we uh, take the highest risk, we add them together, take the square root, and that gives us a risk score from uh, 0 to 10. So that means with this formula, you know, risks that are, uh, if you have many risks that uh, um, impact different um, criteria like availability, integrity, and um, uh, confidentiality, you know, we'll have a higher score than maybe 10 risks that are all impacting only the availability uh, of, your, of your cluster. So you may have noticed that I talked about risk, but I didn't mention remediation. And the way we use remediation is when we look at each of these individual risks for workload, we look for co corresponding remediation. And we basically, uh, if we have a matching remediation, we um, Subtract the remediation from the risk. So, quick example: we have a risk that has a high impact on both confidentiality, integrity, and availability. If we find a matching uh, remediation, right now it means a remediation that has the same attack vector, the same scope, um, and uh, has in this case a low impact on confidentiality, high on uh, integrity, and none on availability. We subtract it, and we get a new risk that's lowered. Uh, by the remediation. And we actually use this uh, lower risk in our formula. So the remediation uh, impacts the, the individual risk, which then will have, in, have an impact on the overall risk. So KCCSS is a framework. Uh, so how do you actually use this framework? It's not very convenient to you know, look at the, the different rules, try to do the mapping yourself. So uh, because we wanted as many people to be able to try uh, KCCSS easily, we created an open source implementation of KCCSS that we call Kubescan. And Kubescan is a container, an open source container that you install in your cluster. It has the uh, KCCSS framework. It scans your uh, running workloads. 
and show you the results in a, in a nice web UI. And what's important here, it's really looking at the runtime configuration of your workloads. So you may have workloads, you no know, definition in your YAML file that you uh, in, uh, install in your in your cluster, but then you may have all the types of you know API calls, operators, you no know, manual changes in your cluster. Hopefully you don't do too many of them, but uh, that may that may change how the workload actually configured. And because we are looking at the runtime configuration, we are really looking at the current state of your workloads. It doesn't matter if you have anything making changes, no. We will see uh, the end results. So let me show you how the uh, CubeScan uh, output looks like. I'm going to show you a quick uh, quick demo. Actually, before I show you CubeScan, I wanted to show uh, the GitHub repository for both KCCSS and uh, CubeScan. So if you do a Google search for you know, GitHub KCCSS, we'll find uh, this repository, which has all the rules, um, risk and remediation, and also the formula um, to show you exactly you know, how it's being computed. Uh, you also have a lot more information, a lot more details. Uh, about the goals, uh, about how it's different from uh, KCCSS, uh, from CVSS, sorry. So you know, take a look at this page. Uh, take a look at the at the wiki as well. We have more uh, more information there, uh, so you can go into more uh, more details. Same thing for CubeScan. Search GitHub CubeScan, and um, you will find. This page that it describes what CubeScan does, and more importantly, uh, shows you how to install it. So you can, of course, compile everything from source. It's, it's fully open source, but we have uh, uploaded. Uh, we have, sorry, we have uh, yes, we have uploaded um, the uh, Docker images into a registry. So you can just copy and paste these two commands to be able to install it in your in your cluster. And there's two ways to install CubeScan. One, uh, which is probably the safest way. Um, which is to not make the web UI accessible to the outside, but do a kubectl port forward. Remember, I talked about this uh, way of making a, a hole into your, your Kubernetes uh, cluster to expose the service. So you can do that to make sure that nobody has access to it. Or if you want to share it, you can uh, put your the web UI behind the load balancer. So just choose uh, whatever method of insertion you want and just copy and paste two commands and you will see something like this. So this is the latest version of CubeScan. Uh, we did, uh, we released a new version, uh, uh, I think less than two weeks ago. You can see it's still the old uh, old turing. Um, so what you see here is the risk assessment you know, from the KCCSS framework uh, for all of the workloads that are running inside your cluster. Uh, so it works with one cluster only. So if you want to show the information on different clusters, you just have to install uh, kubescan multiple, multiple times. So you can already tell you know, that um, actually doesn't look too bad here. We have too high uh, severity, uh, seven, so it's not too high either, uh, and, and mostly medium or otherwise. Uh, so you, we can already you know, know which one are um, maybe of concern or not. And then you can drill down into where the risk actually comes from. And uh, here you see that there are uh, a couple of things that are interesting. So one, we see that uh, this workload has high uh, local privileges. So it might be running as root, and it is privileged. Uh, but we also see that it is exposed uh, through a load balancer. So it is uh, possible to get to this workload remotely. And now you know you can see that there is uh, a combination of local risk, but also remote risk chained together. And once you get access to it, you can actually do a privilege escalation. You can go into more details you now by clicking on show more, and that's where you have the full um, information. So you can see that here, you know, that's you know, obviously exposed to the outside. Uh, of the uh, of communities, no. So it's remotely exploitable, uh, and it's chained with uh, being privileged. 
that gives you know uh, I would fire local access, but that we might chain with the remote uh, remote exploit. So you can get into you know read all the details, understand what is your um, actual uh, risk, and um, understand what you want to do about it. We can see here that there is actually one remediation, uh, and that's about. Um, um, uh, encryption because it's a light service mesh from Octane that provides encryption. So this remediation will only uh, impact uh, remote risk um, that have uh, something to do with being able to see traffic. And this, there is actually one here. Find it. I guess it's not here. Oh, yeah, it is here. So the file that can do that this workload as network capability means it can uh, create any kind of uh, of packets and might be able to do uh, some kind of middle uh, man in the middle attack and see some other traffic, but because of the encryption, uh, no, that will actually lower the risk here. So you can see, you know, you can go through them one by one. Or I, I think it's very useful to do uh, a quick run of CubeScan and see where you stand. You know, you might be surprised that. You have some high uh, severity workloads, or you know, might make you sleep better at night, seeing that uh, the risk is pretty low for your uh, for your cluster. Let me go back to the slides. A few words to uh, to conclude. Okay, this is very just in case of uh, demo failures and screenshots to be able to. Show your kids scans. So what's coming next? Um, so we're very excited uh, about KCCSS. You no, know, we we use it in, in the product, and uh, you know we see that it resonates with people. You know, whenever you see a risk, you know the first question is how do you how did you come up with that? You know, do I agree with the way you do? Uh, we you do we, we the way you do the, the the risk computation. So it's very good. Uh, that's why we wanted it to be open source, and we hope more people are going to. Um, Contribute to it. There are definitely improvements that uh, we are already working on. So one of them is a better matching of remediation and risk. Now I mentioned that right now we're looking at the the scope and the attack vector, uh, but we've added more classifications of uh, more granular classification of risk and remediation that allow us to do a better matching between the risk and remediation. Uh, you can again go to um, the KCCSS GitHub repository, look at the rule, and you will see this additional information there. Uh, we also uh, are going to release a new formula for the overall workload risk. Um, so again, that was a formula that we came up uh, from scratch. Um, we are going to change it a little bit, um, so we have a wider range of, uh, of risk. Uh, we did add a lot of new rules recently, you know, especially around the RBAC and around the workload having uh, uh, API uh, access to Kubernetes to uh, look at secrets to create pod, delete pod, etc. So now it's part of the framework. Um, and one thing I'm personally most uh, exciting about excited about is really being able to use KCCSS as the way to understand how you can reduce your risk. Um, I you know want to provide some tools so you can you know once you see your risk score you can say okay what will happen if I add if I fix this one that's maybe easy to do you know does it reduce my risk a lot or you know does it doesn't do any um, much change because I have some other similar risks that I'm not addressing uh, but also what are the mitigate mitigation that are uh, available and that might be easier than just you know making a privileged container non privileged which which might be you know in some cases not possible so instead what are the mitigation uh, that are available to me that maybe I could use to reduce my my risk um, and, and finally, more references now. Um, so we started to add references to the CIS benchmark. So you can see which one of the security risks uh, have a CIS benchmark for Kubernetes um, item. Uh, we also you know, apply the Mitre attack framework. And, and by the way, there's a very interesting um, uh, blog post from Microsoft that created the Mitre attack framework specific to Kubernetes. And that will show you, you know, remember I, I showed at the beginning of the talk the, the extent of the Kubernetes layer. 
uh, the fact that you define so many things inside Kubernetes that the attack surface is, is huge. Uh, this attack framework for Kubernetes shows that there are a lot of different attack vectors for Kubernetes that you may not have thought about. And a lot of them actually about this uh, security setting that I uh, mentioned. So we are working on adding all of these to the framework, so make it richer. Uh, make it easier to you know get third-party references from CS Benchmark and other into it, and really um, have um, have it to be very powerful. Not just to know what's going on, but how you can leverage that to reduce your uh, overall risk. So, why did we make it open source? Um, you know, first, the fact that we took inspiration from existing open source um, uh, framework. You know, it's just natural that uh, we wanted to make it open source as well. Um, we also deliberately made it separate from KubeScan because it's, uh, I feel it's much easier for especially non-developer uh, like me to be able to uh, uh, contribute to a framework and you know, not, uh, not be uh, required to know how to code. Uh, we hope that uh, other tools are going to use it. You now we're, we're looking at a couple of uh, open source um, uh, policy agent that you know, we could uh, integrate with so that for each settings, for example, you have a, uh, a policy to be able to catch it and remedy it. Uh, we also hope that you know, open source uh, solution, uh, but also vendors, uh, will add their own list of rules and remediations. You now, if you have a few part of Istio, for example, um, we added a couple of rules for you know how Istio remediates some of the issue, but you could add to it if you have a security solution for Kubernetes. You now you could add rules there. Um, so we're looking for more uh, more contributions. Uh, and finally, you know, again, if you want more information, go to the uh, GitHub OctarinSec um, uh, repositories for KCCSS as KubeScan. You can actually take a look at uh, other projects we have there that might be of interest to you, also open source. Uh, one of them, for example, is mod security for Envoy. Um, but we have a few other uh, things for Kubernetes that, that, that um, might be interesting to, to look at. Uh, and finally, if you want, um, more information. No, we haven't moved everything uh, from Optarin to um, um, to VMware yet. So just go to the optarin.sec.com uh, website. Now at the top there is a, a tab about resources, and you get to this uh, KubeScan page um, that give you also a good overview of uh, what KubeScan does and uh, the KCCSS framework. Thank you. Um, again, don't hesitate to contact me if you have any um, any question. Um, you, you feel free to contribute no, directly on uh, GitHub if you have any any question, any comment, anything to add or you no know, anything. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for attending the, the talk. Uh, so we'll go to uh, Q&A. I don't see too many questions. There's uh, one uh, about the capabilities, asking why I only have two uh, capabilities. Um, I guess it's on one of the slides. Let me see if I can get to it. So yes, I mentioned uh, two of the most used capabilities here, but yes, there are certainly other capabilities that have consequences about the security of your workloads. Uh, I didn't list all of the of the rules that we use in KCSS, and there's certainly uh, others, but that are probably the mo the two capabilities that we see used the most, even when they are not really uh, required. Uh, other question about you know what what will happen to KubeScan under uh, VMware as an open source project? So VMware has a lot of open source projects. Um, so we 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 hope to move uh, KubeScan under uh, VMware and and keep using it. I think KCCSS is very useful for for us. I mean it's it's a framework that we use. 
and uh, having a way to demonstrate it easily with cube scanners is, is very useful uh, even under VMware. So we're working on uh, moving that under VMware and keeping it open, open source and keep making uh, updates to it. Uh, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, add them to the, to the list. Um, I just want to remind everybody that you can also send me uh, emails directly if, uh, you know, this, if you try, for example, CubeScan and have any question, um, you'll find references to uh, in the GitHub repository, but my email is easier, jsobrier at vmware.com. There's no, no other question. Um, yes, I just want to reiterate that, uh, you know, installing kubescan is very easy. And just two comments to uh, install the, the container in your cluster. And then it's another command to delete it when, when you're done. Um, so let us know if you have an issue, but it should be very easy. We know a lot of people who have tried it. It works in, in, in all, uh, all kind of uh, Kubernetes cluster, whether it's on-premise, on in the cloud, uh, managed or not. So it's very easy to, uh, to give it a try. If there's no more question, um, thank you everybody for uh, listening to the talk and, and don't hesitate to contact me if you have any question or anything you want to do.